So thanks. So Astrum has developed a leading cell therapy technology platform that's uh, been used to, to expand multiple cell populations for clinical applications using our highly automated and scalable GMP manufacturing system. Our lead product is Xmilus LT, and it's a unique multicellular therapy uh, whose key effector cells, namely mesenchymal stromal cells and M2-like macrophages, have multiple biological activities that promote tissue repair and regeneration. Our focus is on the treatment of severe chronic ischemic cardiovascular diseases. We've generated consistent positive data that demonstrates that Xmilus LT is well tolerated and efficacious in the treatment of cardiovascular and other diseases. Our lead indication is for the treatment of advanced heart failure due to ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM. We have a U.S. orphan designation for this indication, which we believe provides a substantial commercial opportunity for the company. We initiated a phase 2B Excel DCM study uh, in the second quarter of this year. We expect to complete enrollment in 2014 and have data from that study in 2015. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, Astrum's core technology platform has proven capability to expand multiple cell populations derived from bone marrow uh, and cord blood um, for clinical applications. So we've generated dendritic cells for expanded uh, cell populations of dendritic cells for vaccines, hematopoietic stem cells and progenitors for bone marrow transplantation, and tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or TIL cells for oncology applications. Our current product, as I mentioned, Xmilus LT, utilizes expanded populations of mesenchymal stromal cells and M2-like macrophages for the treatment of tissue repair and regeneration. So it's well accepted in, um, in the disease cascade uh, leading from tissue injury to chronic inflammation to tissue damage or organ dysfunction, that there are multiple cell populations and multiple signaling pathways involved in these processes. And, and therapeutic approaches that target single stimulatory pathways have not proven effective. And most cell therapy applications utilize a single cell type to try to arrest disease progression and treat tissue damage. We believe we're taking a superior therapeutic approach by using the cell populations that the body naturally uses to repair tissue. So starting with a small, um, and we're highly differentiated in that regard. Many uh, cell therapies utilize mesenchymal stromal cells, but we're the only technology that utilizes uh, M2 macrophages as well. And both of these cell populations are known to play a role in tissue repair and regeneration. In fact, there have been recent publications demonstrating that mesenchymal stromal cells actually mediate their biological activity through the M2-like macrophages. So we start with a small amount of bone marrow. Um, we reduce cells that don't play a, a role in tissue repair and regeneration, like red blood cells, lymphocytes, and granulocytes, and again, expand the mesenchymal stromal cell and the M2-like macrophage populations. Next slide, please. So these cells um, exert their biological activity both through the paracrine effects of their secreted factors as well as their cell-dependent activity. So both these cell populations secrete high levels of potent anti-inflammatory and anti-fibrotic factors such as IL-10 and IL-1 receptor antagonists. Uh, factors involved in extracellular rematrix matrix remodeling like MMPs and their inhibitors, as well as potent angiogenic factors like VEGF and FGF. But these cells also have uh, direct activities, so obviously M2, like macrophages, are phagocytic cells that clear away cellular debris and apoptotic cells, thereby reducing the immune and inflammatory responses. They remove cholesterol, take up oxidized LDL, etc. And mesenchymal stromal cells are involved, obviously, in the, the remodeling of extracellular matrix. So it's this combination of paracrine effects through secreted factors and direct cell activities that lead to the therapeutic effects we've observed, observed which is re resolution of inflammation, promotion of angiogenesis, and tissue repair and regeneration. Next slide, please. So it's important in looking at cell therapy uh, platforms that they be... Um, 
scalable and industrializable from a pharmaceutical perspective, that there's a clear and compelling commercial opportunity, and that robust clinical results are being generated. And we believe we have all of those factors uh, in the case of our technology. So we have a very efficient cell collection, production, and delivery uh, platform. We take a small sample of bone marrow in a 15-minute outpatient procedure. Next slide, please. The bone marrow is sent to our manufacturing facilities in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where the cells are expanded using a single-use uh, disposable bioreactor cassette that's part of an automated, fully closed GMP manufacturing system, which is highly scalable uh, to meet future production demand and um, to achieve cost of goods sold that are on par with other biologic projects. Likewise, the final product is finished to uh, finished product specifications that have been proved, approved by the FDA as part of our phase two and phase three studies, and they're convenient, the product is convenient and easy to use. So it's shipped overnight um, via FedEx in a qualified temperature controlled container, ready to use at a physician's office. There's no freezing thong, no refrigeration, no reconstitution. It has a 72-hour shelf life, and it's administered using standard syringes or cell therapy catheters like the J&J Noga Myostar catheter system, which we use in our cardiovascular studies. Next slide. So this platform has multiple therapeutic applications. We've demonstrated clinical proof of concept in cardiac, vascular, and bone uh, disorders. Next slide. But our current focus, as I mentioned, is on the treatment of severe uh, ischemic cardiovascular diseases. So our lead program is the treatment of advanced heart failure due to ischemic DCM. Uh, we have an orphan indication, as I mentioned, for this indication. And we're devoting the, the majority of our internal resources to this program. There's a significant unmet medical need, a large commercial opportunity, and with the ORFIN indication, we have a streamlined path to commercialization. We also have ongoing activities in critical limb ischemia. We enrolled about 40 patients in our REVIVE study, and we're following those patients um, for 12 months for safety and efficacy uh, measures, that, and we'll expect to have data from that uh, study mid-next year. We're also intending to file an IND uh, around the end of this year for it evaluating Xmilus LT as adjunct therapy w along with revascularization procedures in CLI patients, which we think is an exciting opportunity. And finally, we do have a partnership with the University of Michigan, which is conducting NIH-sponsored studies in craniofacial reconstruction, and our first data or data from the first study was presented or published earlier this year in cell transplantation, demonstrating that Xmilus LT accelerated bone regeneration in these craniofacial defect patients. So heart failure represents a significant unmet medical need and a growing uh, public health problem. There's approximately 6 million patients in the U.S. that suffer from heart failure and about 600,000 new cases each year. The current cost to treat these patients is about $25 billion, and it's expected to grow to approximately $80 billion by 2030 due to the growing population, plus the high cost of treatment alternatives for these patients, which are basically placement of LVADs uh, or heart transplantations. Next slide, please. So DCM is a leading cause of heart failure and heart transplantation. It's a disease that's characterized by weakening of the heart muscle, thinning of the heart walls, enlargement of the heart chambers, and an inability to pump blood sufficiently throughout the body. And about the majority of DCM is of ischemic origin, either due to prior heart attacks or uh, coronary artery disease. And as I mentioned, there are very limited treatment options for these patients. They're either going to have an LVAD placed or uh, heart transplantation. So when you look at the disease progression of those 6 million patients in the U.S., about 1.8 million of those patients are the advanced heart failure patients with New York Heart Association Class 3 or Class 4, and about a quarter million of those patients are refractory to further medical therapy. So these patients have maxed out on drugs, devices. They're no longer candidates for further revascularization procedures, which is why we think they're an ideal population for Xmilus LT treatment. It's a well-defined patient at a well-defined point in disease progression. 
So as I mentioned, we believe there's a significant commercial opportunity. Not only is there a growing patient population, but we have a leadership position and an opportunity to be first to market to treat these patients with advanced heart failure due to ischemic DCM. We have the orphan indication uh, and a very strong pharmacoeconomic rationale to support premium pricing when the treatment alternatives cost in the several hundred thousand to a million dollar range for a heart transplant. There's a strong preclinical and clinical rationale for moving Xmilocell T forward in this um, disease. We don't have time to go through all the preclinical data, but I think the images are pretty striking. On the right-hand side of the slide, at six weeks, um, in the standard murine uh, heart failure model, those animals that were treated with vehicle have a large infarct, as you can see, with the, the thin walls in the heart, whereas those treated with Xmilocell T on the far right have reduced tissue damage, and I'd suggest that you actually see tissue repair in the, in the model. From a clinical standpoint, we've conducted two phase 2A studies in DCM patients, approximately 60 patients. We're looking to obviously demonstrate that the product is safe and um, safe in the DCM patient population, but we're also looking at uh, surgical versus catheter administration and the ischemic versus the non-ischemic patient population. As you'd expect with an autologous uh, therapy, Xmilus LT was well tolerated with uh, comparable adverse events incidents between the control and the treated group. In looking at the patient populations, the two bars are on the left are the ischemic DCM population. As you can see, there's a substantial reduction in the number of MACE or major adverse cardiovascular events in the ischemic DCM population, whereas there's a more modest effect in the non-ischemic DCM patient population. Subjects treated with Xmilus LT, when we looked across both studies uh, at the ischemic groups, they were less likely to have MACE events, so a 45% reduction in the number of patients that had an event. And then um, the average number of events for those patients was substantially reduced as well. And then when we look at the secondary measures, we saw nearly 100% of patients had an improvement in New York Heart Association class and substantial improvement in performance measures like the six-minute walk test as well. So clear positive trends across the board that supported moving forward into our phase 2B study, which we, as I mentioned, we currently are enrolling. So this is what I would argue is one of the more robust phase 2B registration quality studies uh, in the space. It's a multi-center, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study in 108 patients at 35 sites around the U.S. and Canada, and we'll be using the, the J&J Noga Myostar catheter uh, injection system, looking at the same patient populations, uh, class three and four New York Heart Association patients, and looking at registration endpoints, numbers of all-cause deaths, um, hospitalizations, and then a, another uh, endpoint of emergency room visits to treat acute decompensating heart failure. So a very robust study that we expect will provide uh, great results for us. We have a number of uh, clinical milestones coming up over the next two years uh, in these uh, indications for heart failure, critical limb ischemia, uh, and craniofacial reconstruction, which I'd be happy to talk to you more about. I think I'm out of time, so if you have any questions, uh, I'll be outside, and thank you very much.